Hello guys, this is Panzermeister36. Welcome to another episode of Standard Weathering Procedure. These are full weathering tutorials in which I show the entire process of weathering a tank. Today we will be looking at this Trumpeter Panzer KV-1. As a Panzer, it's been captured by the Germans, which is why the upper areas are repainted in German markings and colors, while the lower areas remain in the Russian green color. I originally built and painted this model back in 2016, but I never managed to finish it, so I dragged it out of the shelf of doom for this video today for you guys. We will cover a bunch of different weathering effects today, including applying a pin wash to accentuate details by applying fake shadows. We will also apply some chipping effects to highlight the wear patterns on the tank. We will also look at some rust effects on the exhaust and the spare tracks. And of course, we will apply a lot of dust effects to the upper areas of the tank. And as well, we will use the same products to make some streaking effects on the sides. Those effects will nicely complement the mud effects we will apply to the lower hull. And of course, the lower hull also includes the tracks. And I picked some metal tracks for this model, so we will look at how to weather tracks that are actually made of metal. So a lot of stuff today, but I've managed to get it for you guys all in about half an hour. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. Now, let's get started. Here is how the model looked before I started the weathering process in this video. As you can see, it has already been base painted and I've done a little bit of work. That's what I did back in 2016, but we're gonna redo most of this stuff. The decals have already been applied. They're just random ones I had in my stash to simulate the capture tank I wanted to make. And there's some chipping effects on the upper areas that we're going to completely rework. Um, but the cast texture I applied at the time does look pretty nice. As for the colors that I used for the camouflage on the model, the Panzer Grey was painted with equal parts Tamiya NATO Black and Tamiya Flat White. And the Russian Green areas are painted with Tamiya NATO Green, because what's Russian Green? Now the Panzer Grey looks good, but I want to rework the green areas. So I'm going to apply a new coat of paint with equal parts Tammy NATO Green and Tammy Japan Ground Self-Defense Force Green because again, what's Russian Green? I am repainting the green because I don't like the color and also because I originally missed some of these sections. You can see there's some gray plastic exposed there. Again, the paint I chose was a mix of equal parts Tammy NATO Green and Tammy Japan Ground Self-Defense Force Green and then I thin it with about 60% Tamiya lacquer thinner to 40% paint. And I simply spray this on to repaint the areas that are green with my new green color. Now we have repainted the green areas of the tank and it looks much better in my opinion. I prefer my new green to the old one because it has a much nicer green color to it. And I also have managed to paint everything green now. There's no exposed plastic anymore. The metal edges of the road wheels and the idler wheels and the return rollers should have a polished metal finish. So I'm going to use some Citadel Iron Breaker paint. When I originally built this model, I had the great idea to glue the road wheels on which makes it incredibly awkward to find the right angle to get in there and paint the metal edges. So if you're gonna build a model, don't glue the wheels on because it just makes this really painful. I have to like hold my paintbrush backwards and bend my hand around the tank. It's a little bit tedious. This is a pretty nice metallic paint. I've thinned it a little bit with some water to make it brush easier, but it's not bad at all. I'm also using it to kind of dry brush the teeth of the drive sprocket here and that will give us a worn metallic look on this area as well because this would also get worn pretty heavily. And lastly, I also painted the inside of the headlight lens with the same metallic color because in real life this should be reflective. There we go, metallic areas are painted. Now we're going to move on to some Tamiya Nato Black. I will use this color to paint the black areas of the tank that includes the machine guns, one of which is on the rear of the turret, 
No idea why there's a machine gun there. There's also a machine gun on the bow plate here. And I also painted the center of the headlight black as well. I did a mix of equal parts Tamiya NATO black and Tamiya flat white, which if you remember is the color I used originally four years ago to make the Panzer gray. And I'm going to use this to repaint the base of the tow cable. And don't forget the rear light. For that, I used Tami X27 Clear Red, which is perfect for this. Now our tank is completely detail painted and ready for the actual weathering stages. At this point, you could apply a varnish to protect the model, though I generally don't do so because I don't really care, and I use pretty durable paints from Tamiya, so I'm not worried about them being damaged later on. The next step is going to be to apply some chipping effects. If you know me, you know I generally, when applying chipping effects, will chip down to a primer red color. That's because I generally do German tanks. On Russian tanks, there is no red primer underneath the green, because Russian 4BO green is a paint and primer in one. Therefore, there is just green and then bare metal underneath it. That's why when I'm chipping my KV-1 here, I'm chipping it down to green because there is Russian green under the Panzer Grey. But there is not going to be any red primer chipping showing through because there is no red primer there in real life. To paint the chipping effects, I'm going to do this with a paintbrush. I have the two AK Interactive colors here, which are Dunkel Grau and Russian 4BO Green, and these are the two colors that are actually currently on the model. I also have a small cup of water to thin the paints down, and a small paintbrush to apply the chips. When applying some chips by brush, you generally want to apply a little bit of white to your colors, because having a slightly lighter color creates a more distinctive chipping effect. For that reason, I'm going to apply a couple of drops of the MIG Ammo flat white color into my green and gray mixes here. It's probably about 20% white to 80% base color, but as you can see, it's not exactly a definite mix and I will often change it up. I will thin the paint with a little bit of water, and then I will take a little bit on my brush and begin to apply the chipping effects. I want to completely rework the previous chipping we have on there because I don't like how that old stuff looks. The light gray color here is to simulate damage to the Panzer gray finish. That can be scuffs or deeper scrapes. This is why I picked a lighter color because if you look at real damage to paint in real life, it often has this lighter highlight around the edge. I focus the chipping around areas that would see the most use. That is the edge of the turret and the areas around hatches. Doing brush chipping like this can take a long time. So in the background there, you can see that I had Adam Wilder's series of videos playing. It's a very long series of videos, but it's super educational. And he goes through a ton of different weathering effects on his own KV-1. After I've finished with the gray chips, I will now take some of my 4BO green mix and I will paint this color inside some of the previous gray chips. Remember, the gray chipping is meant to simulate damage on the Panzer Grey. If some of the damage has been quite extensive, it will have scraped through the gray and exposed the underlying green color. That's why I'm painting the green chipping here within some of those gray chips. This adds a lot of depth. If you're doing, let's say, a gray tank that isn't Russian underneath, instead of the green, you can use red primer here to show damage through the top layer of paint down to the red primer underneath. Looking at the turret here, you can see how I focus the chipping on areas that see the most use as the crew exits the vehicle. However, there's no chipping on the hatch itself because the hatch would be open when the crew walks around. Compare the old chipping on the hull here to our new chipping on the turret. You can't really compare it. 
the two-tone brush chipping looks way better than my old sponge chipping on the hull here. Despite the fact that two-tone chipping can take some time, the results are really amazing. Let's do a quick recap on the hull. Again, we start with some lighter scrapes of the Panzer Grey color, focused on edges and areas where the crew might walk around. And then we take the Russian green color and paint chips within some of those Panzer Grey chips, which gives them further depth. On the exhausts, I also painted some chipping effects to simulate the paint having been baked away. And I did the same on the areas of engine deck below the exhausts. I'm not sure if this would really happen to the extent I have it here, but it looks pretty cool. I'm also going to use some Tamiya NATO Brown to apply a little bit of rust on the exhausts. Now we've completed the chipping effects on our KV-1. As you can see, the results look pretty nice. I will admit that it's probably heavier than it should be in real life because tanks didn't get that chipped up especially these KV-1s that were captured because they didn't last that long. However, I'm having some fun here applying some heavy chipping, and most of this will be covered by dust effects in the end anyways, so I'm trying to go a little bit overboard so that some of it is visible in the end. But it does do a good job of telling the story of our tank, which is that it is green underneath, and has been repainted with this gray color. With the chipping complete, Let's move on to the next weathering step. This is the most important weathering step in my opinion. It is the pin wash. I'm going to use some of the Abtelung 502 oil paint of the color Smoke as the base for my wash. And I also have some Wilder enamel thinner to thin down the paint. A wash is a very thin mixture of paint which we use to apply fake shadows. For that reason, I've selected a very dark gray color because my tank is already dark gray. I thin it to about 80% with the Wilder enamel thinner to 20% paint. And this way it's nice and thin, so it will flow nicely and stay around details. We want the wash to stay around details because the entire purpose of the wash is to make the model look larger than life by making fake shadows around the details. By details, this can be weld seams, rivets, seam lines, anything. I'm using an oil paint for my wash here because they are very easy to thin down and apply, and it's also very easy to clean up any excess. You can also use a pre-mixed enamel wash, which you would buy from AK Interactive or any of the other companies. However, just don't use an acrylic for the wash. Some people like to do this. I don't really know why, that just makes it really hard to clean up the excess. Oils and enamels are much better. You can see here how the wash flows nicely and will stay around the details where we apply it. To clean up the excess, I'm going to take a little bit of the Wilder enamel thinner on my paintbrush, just so my brush is a little bit damp, and I can begin to rub away paint that I don't like. In some areas, it's very hard to avoid getting a little bit of paint where you don't want it. That's why using oils or enamel paints here is really important because I can very easily wipe this away with a little bit of enamel thinner on my brush and it won't damage the base acrylic paints because enamel thinner will only thin down enamel paints. If I was using an acrylic wash, I would probably need to use acrylic thinner here which would damage the base paints and also any varnishes we have as well. Again, a little bit of enamel thinner on my brush, just so it's damp, and I can super easily wipe away any of the excess that I don't like. This is why you want to use oils or enamels for your wash. Now we've applied the wash to our tank, it looks much better. You can see how all the details pop out and it makes some nice fake shadows to make the tank look larger than life and accentuate all those rivets and weld seams. Now similar to the chipping, it is quite, as you might say, overdone 
and maybe darker than it should be. But as I said with the chipping effects, this will be greatly toned down by the dust effects we apply later. So it's okay to go a little bit heavier here to make sure that it's at least visible in the end. Also, you can pick a dark brown color for your wash. I simply picked a almost a black color today because my tang is a dark gray color to begin with. For the next steps, I'm going to be applying some oil rendering effects to the tank. I have the Wilder oil paint dark red for a filter later. And for some dust effects right now, we're going to use Wilder light buff and then MIG ammo dust and starship filth. I also have some Wilder enamel thinner for brush cleaning and some VMS oil expert enhancing medium matte finish. This is a great oil paint thinner because it makes the paints dry faster and also with a more matte finish. I also have an AK Interactive 3 over 0 round brush to apply the effect and then a 1 8 inch angular shader for the blending. I begin by applying the oil paints that I want for dust effects to my little palette here. My palette is actually just a piece of paper towel folded over. I also have a cup of the VMS Oil Expert. I begin by applying a little bit of the Oil Expert to my brush and then I will take a little bit of the oil paint and begin to apply some dots to the tank. We're going to start with what we call a dot filter. You can probably see how it gets its name. Between each color I will clean my brush with some thinner and then once again get some oil expert on there and switch to a different color. And then we apply some more dots. Immediately after I apply the dots, you know, within a couple minutes, I will begin to blend them with my 1 8 inch angular shader brush. There is no thinner on this brush because oil paints take some time to dry. I can still easily move them around and blend them out with a dry brush. As you can see, I'm blending them up and down until they just remain as subtle streaking effects. I can also apply the oil paint in more specific areas and then kind of push it and blend it into those corners to create some rendering effects, simulating more built up dust and dirt in those areas. The dot filter is more useful on angled surfaces for streaking effects, while the rendering is generally done on flat areas where you can't really streak it because there's no down. Instead on the flat areas, we just want some built up dust effects. This effect is actually very easy. You simply apply some of the oil paint. You can see I, I keep the darker colors in more heavy areas. And I apply the lighter colors further out. And then I just blend it with my dry brush in a swirling motion. The result is the oil paint gets blended down into a thin tint, which makes the tank look a little bit dusty and dirty. And of course, never be afraid to go back and apply a second layer or fix any areas you don't like. With the VMS Oil Expert, we can apply a few different layers of oil paints in rapid succession. I wanted to add some visual interest to a couple of areas of the tank, and I did that by applying dust around those panels, but then keeping them mostly dust free. For example, that shield above the gun there. On the sides of the turret, I painted on some streaking effects to emphasize where the dust and dirt might get streaked down when the crew exits the vehicle. Now I could have done some dot filtering as I showed earlier on the front of the hull, but I decided to change it up a little bit and actually kind of paint on the streaks here. Just with a little bit of the oil paint, I kind of apply the streaks and then I will take a little bit of thinner on my brush and begin to kind of tidy them up and you know, fix them so they're only in areas where I like. Note how I keep the streaks in areas where they would build up, 
so for example around the undersides of where that grab iron is welded to the turret. I also applied some more small specks and streaks to the bottom of the turret here to emphasize where the crew might kick up some dirt as they walk around the tank. If you remember earlier on, I showed my dark red oil paint. Now we're gonna use it. I've thinned it down about 90% with thinner. I'm gonna make a thin filter which I will apply to the gun barrel. By applying this paint in a very thin mixture, I can apply a slight warm tint to the gun, which gives it some visual interest. It makes it look kind of like weathered because this thing would obviously get pretty hot when the tank is in action. So it has a nice subtle effect on the tank. Let's take a look at the dusty effects on our tank as well. As you can see, the results of the dot filters and rendering and all those other effects have a very convincing result on the tank. You can see we have some beautiful streaking effects on the sides of the flat panels here. We also have some very excellent built up dust effects on the flat areas. And this really emphasizes the areas where the crew would walk around the most and just apply a ton of crap to the tank when they're moving around. This is why I love oil paint so much. You can do a lot of different effects with them. We already did the wash beforehand with an oil paint. And now we've applied a bunch of different dust effects to our tank and also a nice filter to the gun, still using oil paints. It looks really awesome. And at this point, the upper areas of our tank are looking amazing. All we have left to do is the lower areas of the tank. So let's move on to that next. For the weathering on the lower areas of the tank, these are the products I will be using. I have two pigments here. I have one from MIG Ammo and one from Wilder. I picked these colors based off my previous oil paints. As you can see, the MIG Ammo one is my dusty light pigment, and the Wilder one is a darker brown. I also have the MIG Productions Engine Grime effect, which I will use for actually some mud effects. And I also have some Wilder enamel thinner for brush cleaning, and also for some effects on the tracks. Speaking of the tracks, I have a two-part VMS product here, which is a chemical bath we will use to blacken the tracks. But for most of the weathering effects, we're just going to use these four products here. We're going to be keeping it pretty straightforward. I will begin by applying some of the dark enamel wash on the areas where I want the most built-up mud effects. You can very easily use an actual muddy product for this. I know mine is called engine grime, but it still serves the same purpose. Immediately after I apply the enamel effect, I will grab some of my darker pigment and apply it over top of the enamel. This will give the enamel effect some texture, and then the enamel effect will also serve almost like a pigment fixer and hold this onto the model. After that's done, I will now take some of my lighter pigment and I will apply this a little bit higher up on the tank. This will give us some more dry and dusty looking areas, which will contrast nicely with the more wet, dark, muddy areas we have lower down. And as easy as that, we have some pretty convincing muddy effects on our tank. You can see the result of it on this side of the hull. It looks pretty nice. Let's look at it again on the other side of the tank. So again we begin by starting with the dark enamel wash, which I apply in all the crevices and areas where I want the most muddy wet effects. So think about where the water is going to collect and apply it there. Also generally I would leave the wheels off, but once again I had them glued on a long time ago, so I can't really help that now. Now I'm applying the darker pigment over top of those enamel areas to make them have some more convincing muddy texture. And then we apply the lighter pigment above those areas to give us some dusty effects on the rest of the lower hull. 
I always think it's important to use a couple of different products here, which is why I have a light and a dark color, because a little bit of contrast and variation in your mud effects is always interesting. Generally, I will go back and apply some touch-ups. That could be deciding I want some more wet effects in a couple of areas, so I can grab the enamel effect and paint some more streaks, built up greasy wet areas around these suspension elements. And then I can simply take some more of the pigment and then blend these out or completely cover them if I don't like them. You know, it's a fairly easy process and there's no real limit on how many times you can apply and layer the effects. On the wheels, the process is exactly the same. I begin by applying the dark enamel wash in the areas where I want it to be the most muddy effects. Then I apply the dark pigment over top of that to give it some texture. And then finally I take the lighter color of pigment and apply this in other areas to give us some variation and some dry dusty effects. And remember, don't be afraid to go back and change it up a little bit so I can apply some more enamel effects if I want some more wet looking areas. You can see here we have achieved some very nice texture and variation in our mud effects. And it looks really, really cool considering we only used basically three products. There are a ton of different weathering products you can buy, but I don't think you really need that many because as you can see here, we've achieved a very convincing effect with wet and dry and beautiful texture but we only used three products. Next up, let's look at the metal tracks. I begin by washing them in a solution of soapy water. This will help to clean them off and prepare them for the next stages. The first step is to soak them in the Black Track Pro Activating Bath from VMS. This is the first part of the two-step blackening process. I simply soak the tracks in the solution for about five to 10 minutes. Also, this product is entirely reusable, so when it's done, I can pour it back into the bottle. Then I take the second part of the two-step process, which is the blackening bath, and I've already poured four little cups of water into my bowl here, so I will now apply one little cup of the Black Track Pro. You're supposed to dilute this with one part Black Track Pro to four parts water. Then I put my tracks in the solution for about five minutes. As you can see, it takes effect almost immediately. After five minutes, the tracks are nicely blackened, but I make sure I give them one final scrub with a toothbrush with some of the Black Track Pro on it. And this helps to make sure that it gets in all the little nooks and crannies because sometimes air bubbles can make the stuff not get in there. And there we go. The tracks are nicely blackened, which will serve as a good finish and primer for our next steps, which are the mud effects. I'm gonna use the same products I used on the lower hull and wheel weathering effects. So we start with the dark enamel wash, which is the MIG Productions engine grime effect. I apply this to some areas where I want some darker, wet, muddy effects. Over those areas, I will apply some of the darker pigment. However, now I'm actually applying it by tapping it off my brush because this will give us some nicer texture. The texture always looks good when it's caught up in the tracks. In other areas, I will start by applying instead enamel thinner. And then over top of this, I will apply the lighter pigment. Same thing, I'm applying it by tapping it off my brush. The areas where I apply the dark enamel wash and then the dark pigment, those will end up being darker later on. These areas with the enamel thinner and then the lighter pigment will give us some variation and some more dry looking effects. After the effects have dried for an hour or so, you can see how the pigments will reclaim their original color. You can also see the beautiful textures and variation we have in the finish here. And I think this looks very convincing. I have glued a small piece of 150 grit sandpaper to the end of a wooden skewer. 
I will use this to create some worn effects on the inside of the tracks. This is where the metal wheels on the tank are constantly running against the tracks. In real life, this area gets worn. I will do the same thing with a piece of sandpaper on the other side of the tracks to mimic the polishing effect they get by running against the ground. Once that's complete, the tracks are nicely weathered and we can begin to install them on the model. This is always fun because it's, you know, it feels like you're actually doing the real thing. Metal tracks are very cool. And these ones I have here are from the company called R Model. And they are, have especially cool little details here, like little track pins you get to put in place. I greatly prefer these tracks over Freewheel Model. If you're curious about these tracks, I do have a review on my channel from a couple months ago. I'm also going to use a little bit of super glue to kind of lock in the sag in a couple of places. Otherwise, the tracks can move around and then the sag might not end up where I like it. This way I can distribute it nicely and then kind of glue it in place. And as you can see, the results look really cool. I think the muddy effects we have on the bottom of the tank nicely match with the dust effects we applied earlier on with some oil paints. But I want to add one final touch to our mud effects. That's going to be some speckling effects, which you can see I've already done with a dark color. The dark color was, of course, once again, our MIG Productions engine grime effect. Now let's do a second layer of the speckling effects using a lighter color. I will use the airfield dust pigment I was using previously for dusty effects, and I will thin it down with a little bit of wilder enamel thinner. The result of that is a thick wash-like mixture. I will take some of that onto my brush just a little bit and then we actually make these speckling effects by flicking the brush against a wooden skewer. This flicks the paint or the pigment off the bristles of the brush and makes little small specks of it appear on the model. Just be careful to not overdo this effect because it can get out of hand really really quickly. You want this to be nice and subtle. Here you can see the results of the speckling effects on the front and rear of the tank. I kept it only to these areas, but as you can see it has a very nice result in making some convincing texture. Let's also take a quick recap at the results of the dusty and muddy effects on the rest of the tank. I think the result is very convincing. We've achieved some excellent variation in the finish. We have dry areas, dusty areas, and of course we also have some very nice convincing texture caught up in the wheels and on the lower hull. And don't forget the nice polishing effects we achieved on the metal tracks, which simulate the wear and tear that they receive from running against the ground and also running against the steel road wheels. At this point, I figured the tank was completely finished, but then I realized that the spare tracks could use a little bit more work. Currently, they just had a little bit of that bad four-year-old chipping on them, so I'm going to grab some Tamiya Nato Brown, which if you remember, is the color we used earlier to paint the rust on the exhausts. I'm going to use the Tamiya Nato Brown to paint on a couple of chipping effects around the edges of the spare tracks. This will simulate a little bit of a rusty finish, which we expect on these metal areas. All in all, this chipping process is basically the same thing you already saw earlier on when I was chipping with the green and gray colors on the rest of the tank. I will also be applying a wash to the spare tracks. Again, we already looked at this earlier on, but instead of the dark gray I did before, now I'm going to be picking the 502 Abdelan color Bitume, which is a dark brown color. Again, the wash is applied around all the crevices and details, and it serves to make these areas darker, which emphasizes the details and basically just adds fake shadows to the tank. The result is the same on the spare tracks, though I picked the dark brown here because I wanted that more rusty color look. And actually, that was all they needed. I could have spent a lot of time on these with pigments and crazy stuff, but I figured that what we have right here looks good enough. Now, I had a lot of fun weathering this tank. It always feels really great to get a shelf queen done and dusted, and this guy was a shelf queen for more than four years. But now it's all done, and despite the fact that the base tank itself wasn't built you know, to a really high standard. There's some gaps, there's some sanding marks, there's some decal silvering. 
doesn't really matter because I had a lot of fun bringing this thing back and weathering it up in a video for you guys. It was excellent practice for me, and I also hope that with my video, I have maybe inspired a couple of you guys to try a new technique or two, or just in general helped you out with some weathering ideas. Weathering is of course my passion, it's why I started my YouTube channel here, and I always hope that I help you guys out with some weathering on your own models. Since the base model wasn't that great to begin with, I kept things a little more simple for you guys today with not the crazy fancy techniques like hairspray chipping and everything like that. Instead I did some basic two-tone chipping with a paintbrush, applied a wash, a couple of oil dot filters and other effects there for some dust, and then some bare bones weathering on the lower hull with just one enamel and two pigments for the mud effects. And as you can see it looks great. You don't need a ton of crazy products on your tank to get a nice result. You just need maybe a couple oil paints, some pigments, one dark enamel wash, and then some acrylics for the painting chipping effects, and then you're set. Anyways, like I said before, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and hope you learned something new. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them on below. I always read through them all. I will see you guys soon with another video on weathering a king tiger. Until then, thank you for watching. Big thanks to my Patreon supporters. Those guys really help me buy the painted products you guys see in these videos. And as always, I will see you guys next time. Until then, stay safe and happy modeling.